Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and a retirement worth having. In the wee hours of the morning, I'm usually woken by a loving angel saying, Okay, kid, time to get up. Because let's face it, in the world of the spirit world, in the concepts of God, in the other things that are sometimes seen as odd or woo-woo in the world, there is this realm, this unseen world that we often see about in movies and are often touted about through the uh, wings of a bird that's taking off after someone dies or a butterfly landing on the sill of a window. You see, everyone in the world has a different symbol and that symbol might be something that you need to know about, that you could grow about, that you could learn about. And hopefully I'm just giving you a turnabout, I suppose, but there is something called an animal totem. And an animal totem is something of old school, old world American values. What I mean by that is Native American Indians had totem poles. And on those totem poles that they were built around their tribe or possibly within an actual teepee of some sort, and I'm not perfect with this, I haven't studied this sort of concept in a long time, but I used to have a marvelous little 5x5 five five type of book that gave all kinds of marvelous ideas on God through different native tribes. And I wish I could remember the title of the work, but I used to carry it with me all the time because I loved reading it. It was kind of a day-by-day -day turner, page turner, and I loved that. But the truth is that animal totems are our guides, and everyone in the Midwest probably has some sort of a native Indian guide in their spirit realm, especially if their families sort of planted ground in Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and whatnot where a lot of the Iroquois and other type of native Indians, which again, I've been a long time since I've had my second grade education, can I remember? But I know that I have at least nine animal totems, possibly more now, but I used to love that in the folklore of what I learned in a small metaphysical shop in the Indianapolis realm called New Age People. That shop allows people to go in and explore all different types of religions, all different types of faith, all different types of aspects of the spiritual realm, all in the loving light of the Lord. There's also a set of classes that are taught by different instructors with different spiritual gifts of the Lord. My instructor I spent a long time visiting on a regular basis on Tuesday evenings because I enjoyed her classes. She was a marvelous entertainer, a great educator, and probably the best experience I'd had in a very long time about who Jesus could be through people. But that's what it was like in the very early stages of that relationship and of my need to find the Lord. She taught me many things in the world about spirit realm. I did a lot of extra reading on my own about spirit, about Catholicism, about Lutheranism, about a lot of different other aspects of religions, even reading the Kabbalah, the Quran, and other types of things. I went to different classes through people that I met through business realms and multimedia realms and multi-level marketing realms who had different faiths and practiced different ways of their concept of the Lord. They picked what was right for their soul and that made it right for them. In one of my books called Practical Pendulum that I wrote that I haven't fully published yet, I actually have a chart where people can use the Lord's angels to help them to pick out the right religions for them to study right now. That book is really kind of a workbook for every quarter, that you go through it by the quarter or by the month, perhaps, if you're really going through a struggle, and God will guide you to who your angels are, what you need to focus on in life, where you might be going to hell if you really are doing a bad life, and other things like that. My concern now is that I don't know where my four gig drives are. What I know is that when I stayed with a relative, one of those gig drives got totally, almost practically ruined. I also have 27 thumb drives that were left in my property bags when I went into jail. Unfortunately, when I came out of jail, I did not receive back any of my property at all. Since I've been in Illinois, I have had that property page taken from me and returned to me on several times. And how they did that, I don't really know. But clearly, while I'm sleeping, I'm sound asleep in REM, just like many other people. And that gives people opportunity for peeping and sadly in molesting and other things. What we're looking at today is how do we practice our faith? You see, there's many ways to practice your faith and being a Sunday Christian is a marvelous thing. But if you're not really attending church regularly, if you're not really going to a mass, 
you're not really doing that Catholic thing, I don't know what the fuck you think your class is. But openly in life, we have to be right, not at all. We have to be right with God, most of all. You see, you can try to be right with people, but it will never allow you to win with people. You can try to be wrong with people and will definitely put you in the wrong path with people. You can try to be right and wrong for life balance, but that's a little bit odd and it's a little bit had. But what I'm talking about in truth is finding different aspects of faith that will help you grow, stretch, and build your imagination, your practicality, and your, well, animation of God. You see, God is in everything, is what we're taught in the Word. But if we don't believe that, if we just fake it and say we believe it and don't do it, then we're missing out on the magic of the Lord.